Welcome back to this ongoing study of the Constitution on the Sacred Liturgy. Uh, today we're going to look at article, Articles 28 and 29 from the Constitution to um, continue uh, seeing the implications of the theology we are given in, in Articles 1 through 14. So uh, here we go. I'm working today and talking with Ms. Margie Horner, who's our Director of Liturgy here at the Church of the Jesu. And it's great to work with you again. Well, it is, Rock. It's it nice is, working with it's you. It's wonderful. So how about this? Would you lead us in by reading those articles and then um, talking about what words and phrases stand out to you? Wonderful. Great. I'm happy to do that. Great. Article 28 and 29. In liturgical celebrations, each person, minister or layperson, who has an office to perform should do all of but only those parts which pertain to his or her office by the nature of the rite and the principles of the liturgy. Servers, lectors, commentators, and members of the choir also exercise a genuine liturgical function. They ought, therefore, to discharge their office with sincere piety and decorum demanded by so exalted a ministry and rightly expected of them by God's people. Consequently, they must all be deeply imbued with the spirit of the liturgy, each to his or her own measure, and they must be trained to perform their functions in a correct and orderly manner. Grand. Okay. What sort of things stand out to you? Well, in Article 28, I think what stood out is this idea that they have an office to perform, but they should do only that office, mm -hmm. in those words. Um, that stands out as the strongest principle in that article. And in the second article, I think it talks more about the fact that when they do this ministry, it needs to be done with the proper, as it says, sincere piety and decorum, and that they should be trained or that they must be trained so that they can do it with, um, so that it actually helps our ministry as a community. Yeah. Okay. Very good. So that's what stands out. Well, what would you like to comment on first? Well, I'll, let's go in order. Let's go in order. Okay. In Article 28, when it talks about that um, each person has an office to perform and they should only do that, it, well, it, it makes sense. Um, the example I think of is if you have a cantor, you're not going to expect the cantor to then go off and do the readings, and vice versa. If you have a lector doing the readings, they shouldn't then go off and do the cantor roles. You really want separate people doing those ministries. I think it enriches the liturgy the more people take on that, um, that ministry. And I think that builds into 29. Each person has different gifts that they can bring, and not everyone can be a cantor. Yeah. I mean, we all want to sing, but not everyone has that ability. The same with lectors. Not everyone is necessarily, you know, um, comfortable in proclaiming the word. Or even if you're an altar server, there are some people comfortable in that role. Others don't feel called to it. So if each person takes on their ministry and does it with piety and reverence, and does it well, yeah. it only enhances everyone's prayer. Um, and so they kind of, these two articles really do go hand in hand. They do. It kind of says, do what you should do, but then do it well. Yes. You know? And, um, and what are the things you see, I mean, you've been doing this a good while, so the, the, the director of liturgy, what do you see as helpful about um, keeping the offices separate? What does that help? Um, well, you don't have one person trying to run the show then. I mean, you should have a presider who presides at the liturgy, but you don't have someone else who thinks they want to take on every function and do everything because that kind of takes away from other people wanting to get involved then. Yeah. Um, and it really doesn't help the prayer of the community if there's one person, I hate to say, running around doing everything. Yeah. Maybe that's way to say it so that would and I and the other thing that comes across what I've done over the years is we do try to do our best to make sure people are trained yes. to do their ministry so that they they have a level of comfort in it yes. that they have they feel like they 
they're capable and that in, not only capable but that they're good at it yeah. and they yeah. and it's something that they can offer the community and it it also enhances their prayer yeah. so that part about being trained or at least you know growing in that continue to grow in that ministry you know once you're trained doesn't mean that's the end all either to keep growing in it to keep growing in it yeah. and and sometimes then maybe to you know if you have the the skills to be a lector for three, four, five years or whatever, and then maybe uh, hand it over and um, join the choir or, or you know, take up the ministry of the Eucharist. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. And we've had that happen. And I think that happens in most parishes. You have people who come up through one ministry and then they kind of say, could I try this other yeah. one? You know, and yeah. that's wonderful when that happens. And I think then the um, it, like you said, the, um, the 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 one person who does every darn thing as a default, um, it 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 doesn't help the body function as a body. That that's a tough yeah. thing. Yeah. Well, it kind of goes back when you when you mention body, it goes back to that reading from Corinthians, that you know yes. the body is one but has many members, and you know every part of the body has a different function they're yes. all equally important yes so it's in the community too yeah. each of these ministries are equally important to a good celebration yeah. so. what i'm thinking of too is uh my jesuit brother and friend bob dufford is pastor of uh of two very small parishes in in western iowa i don't southwestern i don't know what uh, exactly the situation is there but uh, I would imagine the challenge is for him to uh, keep calling people um, into uh, to take the risk of mm -hmm. being a minister. I think, but I think that happens in even your large parishes sometimes. Yeah. Um, sometimes, and sometimes what works is the personal invitation, yeah. like saying, Rock, I think you would be good at this. Would you like to try it? You'd be a great usher. You'd be a great <laughs> yeah, person you know, who brings up or the Or Eucharistic collection. minister or yeah. whatever. And sometimes that tap on the shoulder by someone saying, would you consider this? Yeah. Um, first of all, I think it helps people feel like, oh, they think I can do this. Yeah. It kind of builds up their self-esteem. Yeah. And then they, if they take it to prayer and they say, maybe I'll give it a try. Yeah. And they find out they do it well. That's a good thing. And yeah. then in doing it well, you don't have to think as much about yourself and right. am I doing this right or what do people think, blah, 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 but it's more about to get into the service, you know, the simple gestures of service. One thing we do in our training here, we emphasize what's called RST, reverence, mm -hmm. seamless, and transparent. We always tell our ministers that when they grow in the ministry, the idea is that they do it reverently. Yeah. It should be seamless so that, you know, that it flows well. And they should be transparent in the sense that attention shouldn't be drawn to them if a mistake is made yeah. or something happens, yeah. but that everything, because that's what helps everyone engage. So sure. if they can be reverent and seamless and transparent, it all works. It look, you know, it's a goal. That we it is a goal. For. It's a yeah. great goal. It's a wonderful. I've never heard it put that way. I really yeah. like that. Yeah. Well, um, thank you. I think we've looked at this thing well, and I uh, hope it's an encouragement to the people who are who watch this, and um, to the parishes where where uh, there, like you say, many parishes uh, have struggles in fighting people. So. Well, if I can make a little commercial at the end, I sure. would say anyone who's listening to this, yeah. if you feel have felt called to get involved in your church's ministry, maybe this is the time you step forward and you volunteer. How's that? I love it. Okay. Operators are standing by. <laughs> there you go. So thank you very much for tuning in. This has been Articles 28 and 20, 29. And uh, we'll move on to the next several in just a bit. So please tune in and keep checking that out. So thank you very much, Margie. It's great always to work with you. And it is. Thanks, Rock. Thanks.